Ron and Fez. XM202. Oh, uh, bodies. It's the Ron and Fez show. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. And if you can't reach us here, always try Harry's number. He's always ready to talk to you. So uh, I don't have, uh, I noticed I don't have Harry's matchbook in front of me. Did he take that yesterday? Did he take it run? He must have taken that back or used all the matches. Now, as I was coming in, Harry, come on in here. You're allowed back in this room again. As I was coming in, Anthony says to me, I noticed as soon as I uh, leave yesterday, Harry starts getting strong, acting like if, uh, if I need that computer, I will use it. No, that's not the way it. it I that, didn't say that's it like the way that. I heard it too. That's the way Fez I heard, heard it. it, and Anthony heard. It. Why do you think the rest of us aren't used to the English language? We should probably set this up. Somebody's been getting into Anthony's computer, stealing his change, and uh, basically just wreaking havoc in his office. What does what does this fucking kid do? Like in true romance, he leaves. The message behind. He leaves his name and phone number on a matchbook like an Earth 2 master criminal. Like, his calling card is actually his calling card. So he never tells the truth, so we can't figure out why he would write his name and number down on a matchbook. You got, he claims it was in a bus. He was doodling. You got two actual things that could happen here. Number one, he sees a girl. He goes, I've seen movies. I'm going to write my name and number down, hand it to her, and see what happens. But he doesn't have the balls to do that. Two, he's living in some kind of a fantasy world where he's making up that he's seeing women, writing his name and number down, and handing it out to a fantasy girl, which I believe is the actual case. Either of the three sounds really terrible, but it, it is what I said it was. I was just you know on the bus and board and just wrote down my name and number you got because two ways to make it in radio okay there's two things you can do you can a be brutally honest and just say everything that's the truth and people will respect you for it Two, be creative and come up with interesting uh plot arcs for people to follow along with you have uh went to c where you're hiding and non-creative but i'm just a c yeah <laughs> But I'm not. I swear to you, that's the truth. It sounds insane. If, and if you felt the need to just start writing on the bus, how about some jokes? Yeah. Why don't you write a gag down? Some funny things. As we go into the one month mark and we're still waiting for a joke from you. Your funny observations. You know who Fez talked to last night, right? Guess who called him? Uh, the boss? You, no, forget that. Hey, the boss called both of us last night. We said Friday. We've given <laughs> to Friday before. I said this to him. I said on Friday I will tell you the truth. Although Earl has come up with a pretty interesting thing of how we can two for one on you. Get rid of you, pick up two. Which Ooh. I'm liking the way the kid's thinking. Oh, I like that sale. But uh, In my Sunday he, circular. He gets a call from your brother, Ray Bottoms, from North Carolina. And I figured when Fez calls me, he says, you know, Ray Bottoms, uh, Harry Bottoms' brother called me. I thought, well, here, you know. He's going to play tough guy and start saying what Harry needs. What did he say to you, Fez? He goes, I don't know what's wrong with him. He said you had too much on your plate. To For the be first a... time in his life, he's had yeah. too much on his oh, plate. Geez. That has never been a problem. Charter member of the Clean Plate Club <laughs> has too much on there now. I didn't know there could be a plate that, that would be too much on for this kid. <laughs> I don't think you can put too much on Delaware for him. And he goes, the first thing he told you before you even accepted this job is you go in there and you show respect for oh. radio. And you had none. He's So he's discussed it with him? That's what it sounded like to me, yes. I mean, he's rooting for you, but I believe his exact quote was, Ron and Fez shouldn't have to feed him with an eyedropper. Well, that can't happen either. Your arm would get all, give up by now. Earl, I need the world's largest <laughs> eyedropper. One that'll hold gravy. You could use the Washington <laughs> Monument and rub gravy through there, and he'd still be sucking on it, going more and more. All right, Harry, you've been getting uh, phone calls at your own personal phone, and I want that stopped, 201-237-0924. Uh, the joke has run its course, but we'll listen to some of the stuff that you had from last night. Your mailbox is full. You have 43 unheard messages. 
Daddy, this is Osama. It's time to awaken the sleeper cell. Come, my son. It's time to bring down the infidels. Osama commands you, awaken your sleeper cell. Anthony gets his change. Don't make a fucking maniac out of me. Anthony gets his change. Anthony, what's going on, buddy? How's it going? Waxbag just coming out to say how's it going and fuck you. Why did you use Anthony's computer? Deleted. Harry, how's it going? Just thought I'd let you know. I just was talking to Ricky, you know, the old ONA intern. He thinks you're pathetic. I hope you enjoyed your time on the Rodden Pez show. Yo, Harry, what's going on, man? It's Mike. Hey, yeah, you really fucking suck, son. I used to do the phones a little bit. You were the worst phone operator I ever heard. Hey, hey, little buddy. Just wanted to say goodnight and uh, pleasant dreams and... Uh, We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, Harry. I was almost to go to bed without telling you. You suck, man. Get a real life later. Alright, and the other good news is Blowhard is happy the song is playing. I know that he's up he's up in Brooklyn right now doing the Bristol Stomp listening along. Screaming for the Hall of Fame. Uh, you got to buck up, big man. You heard those phone calls. You're not getting the respect that you should have by this point. Well, it was weird. I was answering a lot of the calls yesterday. and Jacking, for... slowly jacking as you're talking to him. For the most part, when he, I... He's actually saying to these guys, what are you wearing? Really? What are you packing in there? The voicemails were all very mean, but for the most part, when I pick up the phone and actually talk to people, most of the people were quite nice. Almost... Sure, nobody wants to fuck with you, big yeah. man. No, but almost like disappointed. They'll find a matchbook on their desk. Almost disappointed that they couldn't get to the voicemail well, that then, I picked up. Then they're not going to make the air. That's probably what they're thinking. All right, great joke, Harry. Thank you very I, much. You're just rocking it. They're uh, pretty much backing down for me. It's just like his brother Ray Bottoms said. We don't get <laughs> stage, Harry. We get, as he put it, we get can't talk to women, Harry. <laughs> I think Did he, he goes, really say that. I, yes, that's. I think thing. he goes by the name Harry Bottoms Jr. from this point on. So yeah, Wiki did call me last night and was like, "What's going on with this Harry thing? Is this uh, is uh, is this serious or not?" And I'm like, "I I promised Harry I wouldn't say anything till Friday." So I'm doing the old. Uh, I'm sorry, you seem to be breaking up, boss. Oh, the baby's crying. Oh, I got I got a pot boiling over. <laughs> Friday. See you on Friday. The boss called me. He goes, is there something you want to talk to me about, about Harry? And I said, oh, we'll see you Friday, Wiki. We'll see you when you come in Friday. We'll all get together. We'll have fun. We got good news for you on Friday. You're going to be working extra. Oh, you'll be here Friday, right? You're really coming. You're really going to be here. And it's just like, then Fez and I are just going to go, this is your problem now. Why we finished the cake. Yeah. <laughs> Here is uh, Chris. Chris, you're on Run a Fez. Hey. Chris, what? what can we do for you? Uh, I'm not trying to you know, stick up for the use of the computer or anything, but uh, this morning, Harry was giving away your beer, Fezzy. What are you doing with my beer, Harry? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not awake. <clears throat> I'm not awake <laughs> Just, right now. Then you shouldn't call. <laughs> if you're not up to this, then you shouldn't make the call. You know, when I roll out of bed, I probably take a piss. I get, I get maybe something to drink. I, then I call radio shows. <laughs> um, he, you know, I heard some of this. Anthony's acting shocked, Fezzy, that you keep a refrigerator full of beer. Do not make me tell about Dark Anthony of W E W, who never went anywhere without a beer in each hand, like a child with a cookie. He always. He always needed each hand filled. One for each hand, please. And now you became the problem drinker, Fez. I don't know where that came from. It's just that I have bet beer, gambling beer that I won, and it's in the refrigerator. Your only drinking problem is that you can no longer drink. You've developed, and I talked to somebody about this, they believe you have a yeast infection. Really? Which is why, <laughs> yeah, which is why when you have one beer, you're buzzed now. A boy can get that? And why <laughs> after you drink, you blow things out of proportion a la Mikey D. Now, I got to bring this up. Now that Harry's here, which I'm going to say the truth, Fez, you kind of backed uh, Earl and Wiki when they brought it up. 
I remember being the one who who said like this. That fat Arab kid from WNEW? I'll have to see the minutes of the meeting. Please. <laughs> I remember saying the term please. But now, wouldn't Mikey D look like he would have been a better pick, but you had that personal problem with him? I don't think Mikey D is the solution to anything. Will you let your personal things get in the way of your professional life? <laughs> yes. If it if it includes bringing Mikey D in here mm-hmm. to do zilch, to stare at us, yes. I believe he can do it. Hey, Jenny, you're on Ron and Fez. Oh, hi, guys. Um, I didn't get to listen to you before, and I'm from Philadelphia. Nice. I've been enjoying you quite a bit. Yeah, it is good. Uh, Good. But I wanted to tell you, you know, it's kind of disheartening to put on the show and always hear about Harry. And I don't know, you know, where he comes from or or this and that, but he's got this attitude about him. He's very cocky. Right, he is. And it's like he's a a priss. And as far as the matchbook goes, you don't doodle that. No. No one does. Uh, That's the problem with him. Since he's a liar, a pathological liar, we never get to the heart of the matter. Yeah, like Don Henley brings rare. up all the time in his music. <laughs> yeah. We'll get rid of him, fellas. Yeah, well, it's not our call to make. He's really, I consider an XM problem, and we need an XM solution. There's a party on Friday. Some people will be toasting. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. Other people will be toast. <laughs> toasting or toast come Friday. Or maybe you're ready. Maybe you're ready. Harry, for him. I mean, I, I, I think I'll be fine. You know, I, I, I've I never had any problems with him in the past. And, I mean, I've struggled a little bit on this show. I will admit that. But I think, you know, I'll be I'll be fine. Would you stop the comedy? I got a stitch in my side. Come on, Mike 3. Settle down. All right? I'm, I got to get this. I got to get this back on track now. Enough with the hilarity. Too many hijinks going on in here. <laughs> Can't concentrate on doing a show. Matt, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, guys. Yeah. I got a way Harry can redeem himself. I've been writing his number in the bathroom stalls all across the Midwest here, and I want him to come up with a good slogan or a joke that I can put along with the number. So right. when you're sitting Go ahead, sitting Harry. There, what, would, what would the funny joke be? I've pissed here. Ooh. Earl, I may want to bring in tapes to the Friday meeting. <laughs> uh, slide projector, I'll need that. An overhead projector and tapes of these uh, third mic performances. Why the overhead? What photos? I have some graphs that I want to put up. It's the graph of jokes done is heading down and food eaten, heading up. <laughs> and we're just showing it's where what, they cross. I call it the hairy X. <laughs> uh, here is... Um, Eric, Eric, you're running fast. Hey, don't, buddy. Good. Yeah. Hey, uh, I got a couple ideas for you guys. Yeah. Um, first of all, I think you ought to be sending uh, him out to collect change uh, to repay Anthony for the change he stole. That's not bad. Make him go out on the street for it. No, and make him stand in the Lincoln Tunnel like a bum and collect change. And another thing, part of your marketing, I think you ought to make some bumper stickers with his phone number on it and pass them all out. Put I, them on all the cars. All right. All right here's the, here's, I'm going to go through this one at a time. Number one. We put an Arab in the Lincoln Tunnel, and they're going to come after us. That's the last thing you want to see driving through the Lincoln Tunnel is Harry walking around with nothing to do. That would frighten me. Yeah, then you get to hear, well, we thought it would be funny. (laughs) If I'm on a subway and I see Harry getting on, and it looks like he's wearing all that stuff under his shirt like right now, I would hop off. That's all him. I don't believe him. (laughs) I think he's wired and ready to go. That's nothing strapped to his chest. (laughs) He's got a strap on, strapped yeah. to his chest. All right, here is uh, some of the Harry stuff. He wrote me a note, though, to say the other ones don't have Blondie underneath. So bad news <laughs> for Blowhard. For me, I don't care either way, Harry. That's fine. All right, so uh, what, what time are these calls coming in? All night long? All day, all night long. They yeah. really never stopped. Yeah. I think your mistake is when you said fuck uh, whack. But I really don't think I ever said that. Not not here, but in, in the back. No, I... I yeah, and I, I, mean, I, I found want... it written on a book of matches on my desk. I don't. I like the people at Whackbag. They don't like me for some reason. I don't know why. Stop the hilarity, Third Mike. I mean, it's great that you come in here, but when you start outshining Fez 
and start planting him the way you've been doing, then I got to step in and protect the show. I am following smoke. I'm yeah. panting in here. I can't keep up. Well, it's not so much smoke, but he is pulling the oxygen out of the room. <laughs> so I don't know what I would call that. It's that kind of, <laughs> he's the fucking monster from Lost where you can't see him, but everything gets wrecked. <laughs> All right, let's take a listen to some more of uh, Harry's fun. Hey, you little cocksucker, what are you doing? Are you playing with your penis? Yeah, faggot. Get off the radio and stay there. You suck, some bitch. Hey, Harry, how you doing? I'm giving you a call from uh, California saying how you doing. Pretty fucked up. I've got your phone number right out on the air. It's a couple of couple people, a few, few people here and there. I don't know. Probably call you and say, hey. All right. It's about time this fucking message thing was open. Just want to let you know your terrorist cell meeting still on for tomorrow. You know, make sure your mom reads the nice little lemon squares. Uh-oh. Uh, listen, I, I know this is going to be hard, but, oh, man. Dude, last weekend I slept with your dad. <laughs> and uh, I know this is what you don't want to listen to right now, and, this is the last thing you thought I would say, but I'm really sorry, dude. But don't worry. He was uh, he was really tight, dude. Oh, Harry, don't be mad. Don't be mad. You, you get your number on the air. What do you expect? You have a good day tomorrow. Hey, Harry. This is Cletus, the gay trucker. I just wanted to know if you wanted to play a little trucking game with me where you back up to my dock and get a load. Anyway, let me know if you really want to play. If not, I'm going to try it with Fezzy. Love you, hon. Bye-bye. I don't know what it is, but this is the best thing you've ever done, Harry, <laughs> is just sit by and let people talk to you. Well, the credit goes to all the listeners. And really? I didn't know you... up and just bashing the shit out of me for would, hours. Would you give me a chance to catch my breath? Would you slow it down with the one-liners? I'm just a human, Harry. I'm just a human. I didn't know your dad was having a gay affair. Mm. We found really what you do best, and that's be a target. What you are right now is a bullseye, and you should be proud of that. You literally are the side of a barn. Hey, uh, Jeff. Jeff, you're around a fez. Hey, buddies. Hey, we would love to launch the best of Harry here, here in Utah, a compilation of his best stuff. Maybe only five, ten minutes of it, but uh, he's welcome here in Utah. I don't know if he'll get five, ten. Have you worked uh, Utah yet? Have you done that? Is no, that I have not had the pleasure. I know you had the ten dollar gig at Uncle Funny's. Anything else uh, happening for you? Every year he gets ten dollars from his uncle. Yeah, <laughs> on his birthday. Uh, Toby, you're around a fez. Hey, buddies. Hey, buddy. Uh, you know, I have to say, I'm really disappointed in Harry. You know, I, I have to say, I was uh, I was a big fan of his coming into this. I really liked what he uh, had to bring to the show before. I even wrote you guys an email when he was visiting you guys down in D.C. Right. And uh, I, I don't know, I feel like I deserve a personal apology from this bum. Harry, do you want to apologize? Uh, I'm sorry that you're an ass. <laughs> Whoa! I was supporting you, man. I was supporting ah, you all the I way. didn't know he was a shock jock, Fizzy. I I, it doesn't matter anymore. There's no support left. When are you killing a pig? He's a shock. Oh, sh I'm sorry. We are on Friday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? Oh. I didn't know you were doing shock jock stuff. What do you, what do you win people's faces right now? Making them deal with you? Coming in with attitude? That had a backpedaling. Yeah. Maybe you're an ass, sir. <laughs> maybe maybe you're an ass, like where the fart comes from. Yeah, dig it. <laughs> dig my shock humor. You two-cheeked ass. What are you, some kind of a shitting ass <laughs> that I'm talking to? Ass the ass. That was a good one, Harry. A little blue for me. Went a little too far. I'm more of a, you, you put the audience up on a pedestal, but, you know, you younger guys, you work on a whole different thing. You grew up on the Fuse Network, where everything's changing, <laughs> happens so fast. He's Jack. He's going to say what he wants to say. You are Jack. You're Comedy Jack. Cough. <laughs> hey, uh, baby, you're in front of Fez. Yeah, um, Harry's really not shy and quiet. I think it's 
speak more if he gets the dick out of his mouth. Ouch. Harry? Nice mm-hmm. nickname, faggot. Baby. Good one. All right. The shock stuff. The grown stuff. man walking around. Baby. That's my nickname. That's obvious, but what do you? where's the twist on it? Where's the comedic twist? He's a grown man with a fucking nickname, Baby. Who, who has a nickname like that when you're a grown man? Yours is Harry Bottoms. Babe Ruth. It wasn't Baby. They called no, one called, no one called the Sultan of Swat Baby in the dugout. Yeah, they did. The Big Bambino? That's the Big Baby. A Bambino is a baby. But apparently you want to tear down the house that Ruth built. <laughs> That's your idea. During October, you hate the Yankees. You're the Yankees. I Yankees. love the Yankees. Good thinking. Is that right, front runner? Hey, uh, Earl, you had to New be... New York. I'm my front runner. How... Yeah, sure you are. If Lebanon's New York, then you are from fucking New York. <laughs> Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Hey, uh, Charles, you're on a Fez. Charles. Kyle? Carl, all right, you're on the Run and Fest show. Hey, what's up? I wanted to trash Harry a little bit. Why? Uh, <laughs> what up, dog? What you been up to? Oh, uh, yeah, that's cool. Check it out. Me and you, we've been down for a while, right? Shut up, Jesus. What is he doing? He's throwing out some catchphrases. I, here's somebody backing you up. Here's Jim. Jim, you're on Run and Fest. Hey, Ron. Fez, yeah. what's going on, What do you say, buddy? Hey, uh, I'm a Harry supporter. And I, I kind of got a different take on it than everybody else. Give it to us, Ben. All right. Uh, you know, he should have never left the change on his desk. He's a hardened New Yorker, and he knows that he leaves stuff out. Somebody's going to take something. No, not here. Not here in this office. Oh, uh, you know what? No, you, you never can tell about people. No, I don't. And, uh, I just don't. You know, it wasn't so much that the change mattered to him, but it's a thing of trust. This is yeah. where we are. I can understand that, but, yeah. you know, today's day and age, man, who, who really can you trust beside yourself anymore? Oh, I trust all of our co-workers. I don't live in a fit of paranoia. Do you, Fez? No. I, you know. I, I'm going to tell you something else. I trust my neighbors. I trust the people on my street. I don't, uh, I'm not sitting around worried all the time things are going to be taken from me. I actually even trust Harry. I think maybe some of this stuff is pointing to one of those split personality things. Now, did you want some... Um, uh, 60 Minutes the other night where this guy who runs the Asian Society has some kind of split personality? No, I didn't see that. So he's like a regular guy. He's like, uh, you know, really smart, like an intellectual. Uh, but then he has other personalities. One of the personalities I've seen before, he was saying he has this kid inside him. The guy's like 62. He has this kid inside him who joins that skate uh, thing in the middle of Central Park where you always see the disco skaters. Right. And I saw him because he's a guy who goes everywhere with a big water bottle on his head. He's an old guy. <laughs> so he really runs this thing like President Bush would show up there, you know, if they're doing something with China, he would be involved. But then he has other personalities that do things. I think that could be what's, what's happening with Harry Bottoms. The thing is, the one personality that works is that stage personality that he refuses to bring here. That personality, Harry Insanian. Now, you said that his brother Ray Bottoms said that he wishes, that Harry says to him, he wishes that he could write everything out and then perform it when he comes in here. Because uh, that's what he does on stage. There's no, he has no improvisational skills. Is that right, Harry? That's yeah, what that's, I got from Ray Bottoms. I lack improv skills, very, you know, as this statement right now. No funny in this statement. But why I, be in radio then, where we have to fill four hours a day? Well, I was hoping that that would, uh, that would somehow that that's kind of buried underneath and somehow it'll come out because I So you I can took write. the risk when you came in here that you had a talent you've never seen before. Well, no, when I went down uh, to D.C., I felt like I had gotten over that, but somehow I went, I regressed. Ronnie, I'm Funny, thinking... hold on, hold on. Let me catch <laughs> say, my breath. I... Fez, I never step on a laugh. When this kid give everybody an opportunity to finish laughing... And then you hop in. That's the first rule. Show business, Fezzy. I had room there for me and my mother to walk in <laughs> side by side. Wow. That is a lot of room. <laughs> That's a lot of fucking room. By the way, that was an improvised line that yeah. he did. That's what it's we did. Brilliant. Here. He's very brilliant. No, He's I just... had this here on page 10 yeah. of the script. Wow. <laughs> well, why don't you start writing up things then coming in as a character? I'll play along with it. We'll do that at uh, 1 o'clock, all right? You give me my lines. And you have your lines, and I'll play off you. This is perfect. All right? 
And I appreciate you taking the job in radio, hoping the skills of improvisation would develop <laughs> later. I'm getting a job at an airline, hoping I'll pick up the skill of flight. I'm hoping, Fezzi, I'm going to the NBA, and hopefully by the time I get there, I'll be 7-1, and I'm going to play center. I'm just, I'll, I'm, I'm going to want to be a different person. Well, can you at least give him to 1 o'clock, Fez, when he and I are going to be doing a comedy sketch? Yeah, I want to yeah. see. Yeah, I want to hear this at 1 o'clock. Now, will I be myself or someone else? I don't know yet. <laughs> I have yet to write it up. Well, I would love to be Mr. Peepers. <laughs> I will create a Mr. Peepers character. No, I, I want to be myself. I'm only kidding. It, we should be me, you, me and you. Um, yeah, All because right. this is the way, according to your brother, Ray Bottoms, this would be the perfect scenario for the show. Yeah. If you yeah. had Ron's lines already choreographed with yours. And if you can write three hours worth of material, that would be great. We'll do it. Yeah, we'll do it every day. <laughs> Radio drama. Radio <laughs> dramedy. Because there has to be some comedy. <laughs> we'll set up a Foley studio in here where we're walking on broken glass or something. That'll be Earl's job. Earl will have sand that he has to put shoes in. Fez is at the beach now. <laughs> Shake that aluminum foil to make the thunder sound. So, Earl, it's going to be a lot more room. It's going to be a lot more work for you. <laughs> You'll need a door that creaks that you actually <laughs> open and shut, a little tiny one. You'll need two coconut halves to make that horse sound. Uh, here's Jeff. Jeff, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, why don't you do something he understands and uh, cut off his hand for stealing? Yeah, that's true. If you were in the radio station that you grew up listening to and you uh, stole from the host, they'd cut your hands off, wouldn't they? Or at least your wiping hand? I grew up in uh, in New York, so... I mean, I grew up on the old NEW and all those old stations. So, no, I don't think yes. Muni, Muni Scotso would have cut my hand. Yeah, I know that, because I know that you know the history of rock. When I hear you talk about rock, I know you know what's <laughs> happening. Uh, hey, uh, Jerry, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Ron, love you guys. Thanks, man. Hey, I, yeah, no problem. Like yeah. a brother, of course. Yeah, hey, sure, uh, no, yeah, in a good way. Yeah, like good, two like, brothers loving each other. That's all. Yeah, in Arkansas or something. Anyway, right. hey, uh, I think I think Harry's problem is he doesn't know it's okay to tell you to fuck off. You gotta you gotta force him to just tell you off right now so he can get it over with. And I think it'll open up his uh, creativity for the show. I'm gonna hang up and listen. Thanks. All right, there you go, Harry. He heard his theory that maybe what you're looking to do is to rise up and tell me to fuck off. Go ahead, big man. Will this be in the 1 o'clock script? Can you do it, Harry? Can you do it? Still nothing, Fess. Harry, are you ready? Uh, I, ha I thought I had to a 1, sir. No, to, you need to write fuck off to me and then say it? Or are you ready to say it now? Dear sir. No, I would never say fuck off. But would that help you if you did? I don't see how that would. Would that take you to what we call man town? Would you leave bl behind boy land and move into man town? I don't think that Where would. Where are these cities exactly? No, not for you, Fez. You're banned from both places. I don't see how that would help. Really? Yeah, I just don't. I think it would only enrage you, and then you'd probably hit me with the cowbell. See, that's the thing, Fez. He never thinks that we're going to be equals. He doesn't see it as a team effort. Well, there was that time you threw the cowbell at me. Right. And that other time you threw the cowbell at me. He thought you would drop that, that that was your necklace. I was exp <laughs> I thought. What the fuck? <laughs> Jesus. Is this yours? <laughs> I didn't want anybody not to know that you were walking. <laughs> I Did want them to know that you're out there in the dark. We want to be able to fa find you. In case you wandered on the tracks. <laughs> Harry? Is that you? I hear him somewhere, Ronnie. Harry! Ronnie, where is he? Fez! Harry's falling down a gulch! Get a rope. I'll get the tractor. Get me a giant salt lick for him. And a matchbook. He thinks he's seen a bull. <laughs> Look, listen to him, Ronnie. He's struggling. <laughs> oh, Harry. You know what would be a good job for Harry is uh, Danny Bonaducci's uh, therapist. Oh, Danny. Oh, Danny. Just look at him longingly. Yeah. And listen to his problems. And just go, oh, Danny. Why? 
All right, so 1 o'clock, you're going to rock this thing. Yeah, I'm going to start writing right now. Are you ready to play one of your uh, your great bits that you do now or people calling you at home? You got one ready we to still go? Have, yeah, we still have some of those. those yeah. There's plenty of those. Those. What, what time did you stop answering the phone last night? Um, I'm really, I mean, other than to get the voicemails, I had to stop immediately when you gave out the number because it the phone basically. They just blow be, right up. Yeah, huh? it be, I couldn't even make calls out of it, so I can't All right, even. So please stop calling. Two zero one six three seven zero nine two four. I like occasionally you hear somebody you know, like Paranoid. I was <laughs> yeah. on there yesterday. <laughs> Harry, uh, it's Perry. Come, giving you a call back. Hey, if you ever need to reach us, it's Ron and Fez at AOL dot com. Ron and Fez at AOL dot com. All right, let's listen to more some more of Harry's voicemail. Hello, Harry. It is your father, Osama. Attack! Howdy. Faggot. Ah, uh, Harry, it's... Oh, boy. No, I'm feeling so sorry for you, all these messages. You don't need to take what Ron and Fez do to you to heart. It's okay. You know, they do it to all of us. It's it's Al, Al, Al Dukes. Um, you know, I, I wrote a song for you. You want to hear it? Here it go. White people are so scared of Armenian people. Boom goes the dynamite. Boom goes the dynamite. Boom goes the dynamite. Hi, Harry. Hi. This is your girlfriend. Hello, Big Dick Daddy. So you know the uh, Ron and Fez replay started and you're uh, about getting ready to get another onslaught. I wish you luck, my friend. Godspeed. Harry Tudanian, the Insanian Amanian. <laughs> Harry Tudanian, the Insanian Armenian. <laughs> Harry Insanian, the Insanian Armenian. <laughs> Harry Tudanian, the Armenian Insanian. <laughs> Tudanian, Harry, the Insanian Armenian. <laughs> Insanian Armenian, Harry Tudanian. <laughs> Why is everyone who calls your cell phone funnier than you? That's so the crazy. thing that fucks me up. That just random people off the street who've never performed before are getting more laughs than you. This is almost impossible. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to have an aneurysm. I mean, Harry, does that kind of even stun you? <laughs> that they're improv on your phone? I don't know. They they just seem like very silly bits on the phone, <laughs> yes. you know? I mean, there's yes, nothing silly very bits. clever about it. <laughs> clever is your thing? Well, I, it's so funny how some of them get just so punchy trying to get through to that number over well, and over again. They get again. very upset uh, like when I when I refresh the voicemail, then there's a whole thing of, "Oh, finally I got through to you, asshole." Like they get very angry that they can't curse me out. Mhm. Mm That's funny. Um all right, Harry. One o'clock. We're gonna do a little comedy sketch, right? Do we? Is there any part you can write for Fez? I mean, he doesn't have to be in it as much as me and you. You and I are the ones with the acting background. Is there any way I could get a line? All right. Um, yeah. I, let me just uh, read this thing off, Fez. It, it just came in, and I really we don't have the instant. Uh, well, I can't even call it that, right? I don't have the I am thing set up here, but I do check the emails every once in a while. Ron and Fez at AOL dot com. And said that uh, Harry is a known thief of other people's sketches. All right, let me um, let me uh, just check this out. Harry, come on in here, because the guy does seem like he knows Harry's uh, background. Harry does do sketch comedy. Yeah, with a sketch troupe or something. Where he writes some brilliant stuff. I'll just read this, Harry, uh, and it's from actually from a young lady. And it says, uh, this is to let you guys know that around the improv community in, in New York City, Harry is known as a thief of other people's sketches. Specifically, his sketch group, the Wicked Wicked Hammerjacks, are known to <laughs> oh, swipe material and they see other groups perform. Thought you'd like to know. Um, Hammerjacks, that's very cute. That's a cute little improv uh, name. No, we don't steal any... Anybody? I don't material. understand what you're saying. We're the wicked, wicked hammer cats, not the jacks. That's like uh, that's their little play on 
trying to, you know, like, oh, you're the Hammer Jacks. That's their uh, war name, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. What are you talking? Wait. <laughs> I am so confused. <laughs> what? What are you? <laughs> Step back up. What are you talking about? That's no, who's I, they? It was just a. Ch- I don't know who that's from. That's a Barbara. very cheap joke. Um, but no, we don't steal any material. We do all right, our what own original stuff. What do you guys really call stuff. the Wicked Wicked Hammer Cats? Oh, I called him Hammer. I said Hammer Jack. Oh, okay. So that's not. Yeah, it I, wasn't a war name. Uh, <laughs> a war name. <laughs> I don't know what a yeah, war Yeah, I said name that. Is. Oh God. Um, we but never I, steal I mean, any material. She would know your group. Earl, are the Yankees ready for the Boston that's just, Red Cats? <laughs> that's just yeah. stop with the war name. <laughs> I will not put up with war names. <laughs> but, uh, Harry, come back. What are you doing over there? What did happen? You dropped the ball? <laughs> when I throw my glasses, Literally, I bet yeah. too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so why would she know who your group is, which is not a very famous group? No, right? it is. Actually, it's one of the more, more popular groups in the improv community. We just won the um, ECNY uh, Sketch Group of the Year Award. Really? So. Doing who's, uh, doing Our who's material? Our own sketches. Yeah. Well, no, we did a, a Move very, over, Second City. An original sketch about a, a parrot shop. <laughs> What's a, that? So we did a very original sketch about a pet shop and a dead parrot, actually. Um, that was a little play on that, because that's the Monty Python yeah, it's oh, I'm sorry, yeah. from America. I don't get all that stuff. <laughs> he gets it on Al Jazeera. How's the sketch coming along that me and you are doing? Uh, I really, it's... Have you stolen one yet? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll just do that. What have you I'm... Googled? Two-man sketch? Sketches take a long time to write, so I'm trying to... It's This one's going to be a more jokey, vaudeville-esque type of news type of thing. Mm. Will um, this make Ronnie an official hammer cat? Jack. Um, Jack. <laughs> That's our war name we use. Warriors. Hammer cats. That's Come just jealousy. <laughs> also, your friend uh, said you're using this as a day job. Who? Who said that? Who? What? How many oh. friends do you have? You I got have Ray. Lot of friends, Ray. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not. Uh, believe me, it's not. If I. It's too much work for just to be a day job. I don't treat it like a day job. It's more than, you know, it's more than a full-time job. It's not just something I come in here, I just goof around and then leave. I take it very seriously. Right, hold, hold what on. time are you going home today? Now you step <laughs> now you're stepping on your own laps. Let those things <laughs> permeate. I got to learn pacing is yeah. the thing, yeah. Mm. Okay, so uh he says they don't steal. Um No, we don't steal. We're very original and if you, you hear his humor right here. You, check you out know our site. he's Very actually a funny, funny guy because if he was a thief when he came in here, would he wouldn't jokes. be this funny. Yeah, I would ha- actually have stolen some jokes. Why would this man have to steal comedy? Thank you. That's where, <laughs> and he didn't get it. He acts like if he came in here funny, <laughs> he would be a thief. Right. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Harry. Go back and work. Starting to come together, though, I think. It's all starting to play out. Harry's walking around with a baseball in his hand. I had the feeling the sketch you'll be doing is who's on first. <laughs> you know, there's something mean about you where you like when somebody else is in the bucket, don't you? You get the biggest kick out of that. Just the stress I had to deal with last night. Oh, yeah. Dealing with him? Dealing with him. Talking to his brother, Ray Bottoms Jr. Right. Conversation I shouldn't have had. Uh, when the boss, Wiki, calls. Right. And he says, do you need to talk to me about Harry? Right. Then I have that because I know we're all waiting for Friday. Because, you know, fair is fair. If you tell you to give the kid the Friday. Again, we're wasting time because nothing's going to change. So just the, the amount of time that I had to take out of my day yesterday, my personal time, mm-hmm. to deal with Harry and Harry problems. Right. Yeah. I, I have no regrets here today. Mm. Okay. All right, here is uh, Harry's uh, cell phone. Please stop calling this, everybody. Uh, 201-637-0924. Let's just stop it. The bit's over. It's me again. You turned off your phone. Oh, are you naked now? Oh, I bet you're naked. Oh, Harry. You have contribute nothing to the radio show. You sound to me like the biggest hudwhacker that ever walked the face of the earth. And the one thing that I really don't like about you 
if you always try to justify your opinion on your bullshit fucking shit, then it just makes no sense to me, Harry. And I just hope that you get fired Friday and we never have to hear your sorry ass on the radio again. I'm not trying to judge you as a person because I really don't know you, but, uh, you know, I really don't like sand niggers. So kind of sounds like that's what you are. You're in denial about it. So, uh, hi, Harry. This is, this is Ann. Yes, this is another gay call you're getting. I'm pretty sure you've gotten a lot of them, but this is actually Ant, and you know, I, I got that mask book, and... I was wondering if, you know, we could hook up, you know, uh... Yeah, you're so hot. That fat stomach of yours. That fat hairy Armenian stomach of yours. Ah, oh, you're so hot. Oh, Harry, this is Osama again. You're fired. You no longer a terrorist. I've been waiting for something to blow up. Been watching CNN. Nothing. Oh. Just like on the show, you suck. You're fired. If we were holding auditions to play Osama Bin Laden, we'd be yeah. all set. We'd be ready for it. <laughs> well, uh, coming up at the top of the hour, Harry and I will be in a sketch, and hopefully there will be a little something written for Fez. That's what we're pulling for. I'm just ho- just a walk-on, something, maybe just one line yeah. where I come in. These pretzels are making me thirsty, yeah, something anything. like that. Yeah, just uh, really one good line for Fez is all we're looking for. Maybe what I'd like to call a scene stealer. That would be great. You could be set up that way. Well, Fez, it's that time. Oh, that's right. It's 1 o'clock. That means it's time for Harry's prepared script. I talked to his brother yesterday, Ronnie, Ray Bottoms. Right. And Ray said that what Harry would really like in an ideal situation is, since he can't improv very much, He'd like to just, if he could have everything scripted that was going to be said on this show, that's the way he would like to go. That would be his perfect Ron and Fez world. So he would like to have been part of old-time radio. Exactly, where you're just dropping the pages right there at your microphone as you're going through the show. Now, have you written lines for me and you, Harry, or how have you done this? What do you got, I, Harry? I actually have some multiple parts. So um, I have for you, myself, and Fez. So, so will we, I be playing Ron or somebody else? No, no, you play a, a different character. This is a parody of a, a, a dramatic TV show that's currently on. And uh, you, you will be playing the uh, aide. Aides? No, the aide, just the aide. I will I'm be, sick? No, no, it's more like not that type of aide, the type of aide that you would find in, let's say, a, the West Wing. And, uh, Fez, if you'd like to uh, play the president. I'm the president? Okay. Yes. And, um, yes, and I'll, I'll be an aide who eats brisket. Okay, I mean, you know, as long as it doesn't interfere with the sketch. This fall on ABC, a woman will be president. You damn better have a good excuse for getting me out of bed at 2 in the morning. Oh, I'm sorry to wake you, sir. Well, we're in a crisis. What's wrong? National emergency? Are we under attack? Well, has anyone seen my earring? I've lost one of my earrings. Gina Davis stars as the first female commander-in-chief. And why are you eating bricks brisket? Mr. Secretary, sir, there's been a snag in the negotiations. The Germans are pulling out of the treaty. Well, maybe it's how we we paid a visit to the German ambassador. Uh, Yeah, that's the problem. She and the president are on speaking terms since they both wore the same pantsuit to the G8 summit. Are you kidding me? Huh? That's the line there, Ron. Oh. Plus, the president's been really upset since she threw out the first pitch at the Nationals game and hit somebody in the first base dugout. Watch the drama unfold in the world that is politics. So then Jennifer runs into Jimmy at the supermarket, which is so totally awkward because Jimmy was sleeping with her best friend, which is weird because she's totally not that type. But anyway, I was like, Jennifer, you deserve so much better. And she was like, I know, but I think he's changed. What was this speech supposed to be about? Healthcare, I think. She did it for honor, for country, for respect. I have to speak to the president. I advise you don't go in there, sir. It's very touch and go. 
She's already bombed three nations and fired half of her cabinet. What's wrong? New developments in the war? No, mental cramps. Okay, that's it. I've had enough of this. I'm going to talk to her right now. Who left the toilet seat up? I was never here. Commander-in-Chief, Tuesday nights on ABC. I didn't even get it. Uh, she's really bad at being president because she's a woman. And it plays off the stereotype of women, you know, that women can't handle the man's job. I thought this was going to involve our show. Well, it's it's the, the idea I came up with. It's, you know, it was just a sketch. It is our show, Fezzi. Our show, Commander-in-Chief. Oh. This brisket is so fucking good. Story Ron and Fez. And I don't want to tell the Jews how to eat, but I still think a piece of cheese on here would do the trick <laughs> for everybody. A brisket and cheese, and you can't even offer it, or they act like you tried to do something awful. Yeah, that violates all the rules. You're mixing your dairies and your beefs. Uh, did you ever get a hold of Al Dukes? Maybe you just have to cancel him, Earl. Earl's gone for another plate. I'll try him again. Has he got some voicemail? Maybe you cancel him until tomorrow. I mean, I like the fact he's taking us out to lunch, but I just ate, you know, two brisket sandwiches. <laughs> and he's giant pickles. Are you feeding the rest of the office, too? Honey? Yeah, yeah, no, I offered to everyone, and uh, some of the people, you know, have already eaten, so they're not going to eat right away, maybe. But everyone's, you know, everyone knows that they're welcome to it. Stop the comedy. Come on, third mic, slow it down. Where was that on this page? I didn't get that page of script. Here's uh, Taylor. Whoops. Oops, I got it. Yeah, so. now you got it. Taylor, you're on the air. Hey, Taylor. Hey, why is the only thing that uh, Harry is any good at is writing dialogue that sounds like it comes out of a woman? The rest of it was fucking miserable and awful. So you only enjoyed the woman part? I didn't say I enjoyed it's a parody. it. You sounded like a woman. I sounded like a woman. Yeah, you were You sound like a bitch. Accurate, How about that? Accurate reproducing it. Well, yeah, bitch would work too. That's just fine. Harry, no, Harry. You just didn't understand your writing. Harry, can, Harry, can you improv something? You're an no. asshole. Oh. How's that for improv? No, that's accurate, not improv. So it's accurate that you're an asshole? All right, uh, tough guy. If you really want to call Harry, 201-637-0924. Call him on his home t uh, phone. You feel like you're so tough. I forgot about that. Oh! Ron and Fez. XM202.